Arms. We're back with another episode of Missouri River Bottom, and we have finished putting our barley in the field over here, which is awesome. Uh, I'm trying to remember if we had all this set up for automatic application rates and stuff. We did. Just don't like to uh, put equipment away with the wrong settings, because then I go to jump in it the next year and things don't work out right. But as you can see, we got all our barley in, and we got our big bud running over there on the tillage. We did a little bit off camera. We're almost done. I have moved time forward another day. We're in the, the back half of September. We're running two uh, day uh, cycles here on the current season setup. And the plan today is to jump into harvesting those soybeans, which means we do need to move the time forward into October, which shouldn't be a problem at all. We've just got to get it done, but I figured, well, let's get our equipment to uh, move back up into the yard first, and then we can jump into things. Now, this giant seed drill, I'm not sure, is going to go into this shed or not. It looks like it's going to be a tight fit, but in the event that it does work, I want to be coming at it from the other side. I think the plan is to drive all of our equipment through this big shed. Oops, we clipped the telephone pole but uh, drive all the equipment through from the back side here. That way uh, we always know which way stuff is pointed when we need to get it back out of here. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. And we'll see if this is gonna fit in here. I'm thinking it's not, and we're gonna end up in quite a predicament here when it doesn't fit and I can't back up. Yeah, there's no way, right? That side's past the door, that side's past the door. It's uh, unfortunate. We're going to have to uh, look at upgrading our farm with some bigger uh, buildings if we're going to be running all this giant equipment here, which is fine. We'll, uh, we'll have to figure out where we want to build some stuff at some point here. But for the time being, I think I'll just run this up and turn it around and leave it in this grass uh, area right over here. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's a better spot for me to leave it. You know, maybe I can just leave it up here. I'm going to bring up the auto drive course. I just don't want to be too close to where the semis are going to be coming through. And we might end up buying this field right next to us and doing something with it. So I don't want to be too close to the grass. I think that's going to be a good spot for us to leave this thing. All right. Well, with that out of the way... Uh, I really can't think of any reason we can't skip time forward. Uh, having the big bud keep working on tillage while we're starting off harvest shouldn't be a problem at all. So we're just going to leave this here and hop out and go ahead and just click our day forward. And there we go. We're into October. Looks like all of our corn uh, actually grew up as well. We're in the final harvest stage for that. So we're going to need to pick up some corn headers at some point. I don't know if I've got a corn header uh, installed that would be good to use with the uh, harvesters that we've got. So I'm really hoping that we can get in on the other stuff. This is barley all grown up here. It looks a lot like grass. I am uh, guess I don't grow a lot of barley. Looking good. We've got a ton of weeds out here though, so I'm gonna have to get that sprayer up and running as well soon so that we can deal with all these weeds everywhere. But before we do that, it does look like our soybeans are ready to go. So I'm gonna hop on into this combine and I'm trying to think of the best place to start this course off. I think it's gonna be in the corner facing this way. So let's circle this around and uh, based on the discussion in the comments I do think that we're going to get rid of this Balzer grain cart and try a uh, different one. Oh, I'm bumping the tires. I'm not sure I'm going to fit through here. We might have to run over a half foot of barley. Hopefully it's in this short stage. It won't matter. And let's go ahead and just send this into the field a little bit. Perfect. And we're going to do two tools, one headland pass. I think that worked out good for us last time. Generate and a 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It's trying to do all of the fields, not just field 54. I'm just now seeing the outline here on the field. That's, that's our plan is to uh, do that with this field. But unfortunately, it wants to try and do that now. And it's not even going to harvest this middle part of the field. So well, there you go. We've got a little bit of issue here. Uh, I think what we're going to do instead, I'm going to get this guy out of the way so the big bud can finish its task. But I think what we're going to end up doing here is just running the combine manually to tick off the headlands. And then we'll just run an in-game helper and deal with it ourselves. Uh, it should be easy enough with the soybeans here. Um, they're not particularly voluminous which means we should be able to handle running around and doing a few things ourselves. I don't think I jumped into the cab on this combine at all since we purchased it. It's a nice clean looking cab. Some good detail, good visibility out the windows for a change. Nice. We really should uh, clean our windows at some point here, but overall, Seems like things are going good. I think I might be off by a row here. That's okay, I don't want to monkey with it too much. We'll end up uh, with really crooked rows. It's got some good sounds in the back too. That's a uh, large amount of beans pouring in though for not going up very far. I suppose that uh, is probably the one thing I would say could be adjusted down. Maybe not have such a dramatic amount of uh, beans coming out of the pipe when we're harvesting. But we are getting 74 bushels an acre right now. Not the best yield, but not too terrible for beans. Pretty good. I say not the best yield just based on the uh, mini map over there. Uh, looks like we could get a little bit better yield. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this course play course just so that it doesn't uh, confuse me. There we are. I guess the other good thing about us doing this ourselves is that we'll get less uh, waste in the corners of the field, hopefully. And we're 20% after taking off the short upper part of the headland there. I'm really hoping I can get all the way around the field. We'll see. And maybe not all the way around, but at least down to the other end. Uh, I figure if we can do that, then the rest of this should be pretty easy. And so while we're driving down here, let's take a look at our grain cart options. I installed a couple. Uh, I've got the 22 series also by custom modding, uh, and we've got the Avalanche 2596. This looks like it's got a tracked model, which we have the tracks on the... Uh, whatchamacallit, so maybe that would be a good one if I go case red. We'll do this one. Um, I'm gonna have to sell the existing uh, grain cart first to be able to afford that, which is fine. We're gonna go ahead and ditch this one and pick up this other one because I want to see if that's our problem or not. We've got to experiment at some point and we might as well just do it live because I have not had a chance to uh, try and do that off camera. There we go. That's a little bit more expensive of a grain cart for some odd reason. So we're uh, down another 50 some odd thousand dollars. I'm looking at my weather forecast too, and it looks like there's rain coming. Um, I'm gonna go back down to one X time on the day here while we get started on harvest, just because we do have some mod issues and whatnot that we're working out and I don't want to be dealing with rain on top of that when all I really want to do is figure out if all these mods are going to work. It's always uh, a struggle starting a new map with a whole set of new equipment compared to you know what I've used on a previous series or something. It is always a more interesting to mix things up and have a variety of equipment when we're playing through on these maps but at the same time uh, we run into all these little issues and sometimes you just want to play the big game. You don't want to deal with uh, troubleshooting every little thing on farm sim. All right, we're at 48%, almost 50% here. Uh, I'll be over 50 by the time I get to the corner. So I don't think there's any way I get all the way around the field, but I'm hoping 
I can get to that back corner over there at least uh, before we get to 100%. It's seeming unlikely though now that I say that uh, since I haven't gotten all the way to one end of the field. I haven't taken off a whole f headland pass and I'll be taking some off as I go down to the corner so we're definitely not going to uh, get to the, the far corner of the field over there as I want. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to get to this corner and then set the worker off going the long way down the field and while the worker's doing that and getting full I will jog back up to the farm and we'll grab the grain cart and get it out here. That sounds like the plan. We've got a bit of a curve up here uh, towards the road side of the ditch. Luckily this header seems to be champing it out even though it's off the ground quite a bit. I've had some issues with other headers not necessarily doing a good job when you've got some uneven terrain like this. So that's good at least. And if we hop and cab, the sound's a little bit more bearable there. Some of these uh, combines can be quite loud when you're standing outside, which is quite realistic. If you've uh, never stood outside next to a combine when it's running in the field, it's, uh, it's quite an experience, but it is very loud. I'm loving the yields here, though. We're over 80 bushels an acre. We're getting... Uh, quite close to a full hopper here so we're gonna have lots of crops for us to sell off if I remember correctly all the stuff we've already harvested is gonna get sold in January yeah January is the high point for our grains wheats and oats looks like I'm gonna be at about 77% when I get to the corner here nice I'm liking it all right this is a nice long stretch so I should have plenty of time to run up and get the grain cart and in fact I'm sure it's gonna just get uh, full before then and uh, conveniently I left the quad track right here in the yard there's our 80% warning all right all hooked up and ready to go we're gonna run this up to the field here oh man these giant bear spots in the corner are gonna drive me nuts all year every time I drive by this field so unfortunate. Uh, I'm really hoping that this grain cart works and solves our problem with the uh, combines not keeping their augers out. We're going to find out if it was the grain cart or the combine real soon here, it seems like. Uh, but a lot of people in the comments indicated they were having similar problems with that grain cart, so I think that's what it was. Looks like our big bud finished up down there as well, which is great. And I didn't quite get out here to unload the harvester, unfortunately. So I am going to have to uh, keep going. And we'll have to try the unload on the go stuff probably a little bit after. Um, I'm wondering, I left this thing running. I'm going to run out of fuel. I'm wondering if I can start this guy up on the up down rows and get back down there and empty the other combine and do the headland before he gets to the end. I don't think we can. Uh, that's not the right direction. All right, there it is. It's a race. There's no way that I get the other combine to this corner though before this one uh, gets down there, I don't think. We're not that fast. 26, 27 miles an hour. Although this thing is faster than the Big Bud, which is going to make it a better green curtain setup anyway. And I do like tracks on tracks. I think having a, a tracked tractor with a tracked implement always makes sense in my mind. I know realistically you haul all kinds of things with a, a tractor like this, but I do like the aesthetic, I'll say. Now, I swear I chose Case Red when we purchased this Brent Wagon. Uh, I must have done that when I was looking at it and not when we were actually purchasing it. So you know what, when we get over here, before I pull up, I'm going to hop out and I'm going to see if I can change that. I can. Look at that. Alright. Now that's definitely going to affect our ability to win out in a race, but 
we wanted the color scheme to match and I want to do that before I take any screenshots of it for the uh, thumbnail today. Whoa! All right. That uh, articulation got all twisted up there when we were turning around. I'll have to be careful not to turn so tight in the future. It looks like we've got this going, although the base game helper isn't going to try and start driving forward on its own until I move out of the way, I don't think. So let me try that. Yeah, there we go. All right, we've got a chance now. Yeah, I think this is definitely working better already. Normally it would come up behind you and put the auger out and then it'd go back and forth and definitely working better, folks. Well, at least we've got a, another rather large uh, grain cart here to keep up with things. And this one's actually got a scale on it too. Very nice. I think the combine's about emptied. So I'm going to get out of the way here. There's not a lot of room to maneuver, and I know I've got both combines coming down to this corner to try and turn around at almost the same time. I'm going to pull up here, and then I'm going to try and back into this driveway area with the grain cart. Hopefully avoiding that shed. Ooh, that was closer than I thought it would have been. And then I'm going to have to swing around this way. Ah, uh, yes, our workers are going to get a little bit confused. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get rid of this one for a second. I can turn around up there because I have the other field uh, for room. But down here, we are going to need another headland pass. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. And maybe I will start off a worker here momentarily just so that I can get this grain cart back up onto the field. Uh, I wonder how much grain we ended up getting into this guy with just a single pass down. I'm gonna run up here and just empty him out while I'm thinking of it. Eh, probably about a third of a hopper, not too bad. Oh, I'm a little bit too close actually. It's a long pipe on this uh, combine. We got that big pipe when we were running with the, uh, the Balzer grain cart there because it got me a little bit higher to get over the edge of it. I think this Brent 2596 is going to end up working out a lot better. So with that all underway here, let me take a look. I don't remember where I've got... I don't have an auto drive course down here at all. Uh, I'm going to need to bring something down here. I don't want to have to drive all the way up to this uh, other field point every time I want to unload the grain cart. So let me bring this back up and we'll create at least the auto drive course down to the field. I got to keep an eye on that worker that's going across the bottom. I don't think I want a third headland pass, so I do want to go down there and kind of get him brought back up this way. What I'm going to do is create a little bit of a curvy point this way. We might have to clean that up a little bit when we actually uh, get to using it. That's all right. And I'm just going to run this down here uh, the length of the field all the way to the corner. And then we'll make a loop back and create the field entrance on our way back. Now... Oh, We've gotten to the end of the field here, so I'm going to come over here and I don't want to uh, turn the worker off while I'm in the middle of the crops because things will get destroyed, but we're going to bring this up to the top end of the field and start taking off the next headland bit. I probably could have harvested my way up here, but I wasn't even thinking about it. Just cut out my corner a little bit so I can have enough room to turn into the headland row here. Perfect. And I'm not facing quite the right way. There's our facing settings down in the mini map there to make sure we're going the same way the rows are going. And this, honestly, this shouldn't take too long. If I take this headland pass off on the short rows, I don't need another headland pass up on the other end there. Uh, so really, once I take this pass off, I can start working on up-down rows with this combine as well. Uh, we might just set him off from the far end of the field over here, actually, and 
I'll have to do a little bit more running back and forth with the green cart, but it honestly won't be that bad. Um, I'm just trying to think about how this field is laid out. What would probably be best, though, is if I were to cut through the middle uh, with this combine so that I can uh, sneak around depending on where I'm at and get through this field without having to go all the way around. So I think that's what we're going to do, especially because I'm manually driving the grain cart so I can't uh, cheat and cut across the crops like uh, course play tends to do. I wonder if the course play unloader works with in-game helpers driving it or if it's only with course play drivers. I feel like this is a question I've answered in the past. I feel like it's just with course play drivers. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna cut through. So I'm just getting lined up here on my 180 degrees. Let's get a helper going. And then let's go ahead and unload this combine here real quick while we're thinking of it. Because it did look like it's pretty full and it's about to be going the right way to get unloaded. That's the biggest downside with using the in-game helpers for stuff and why I can't wait to get these fields combined and working with course play. Um, it's just, uh, you always have to be paying attention to what side the auger's on when you're going up and down in the same rows you know, like the in-game helper does. But yeah, I'm seeing we're not having any issues with that auger closing in on us again. So I think that this has solved our problems. We'll have to give it another shot with course play actually driving the combine, but I don't think that actually affects how the auger uh, gets opened and closed. I think that's all just using the same farm sim helper mechanics to handle that behind the scenes. So I think we've solved our problems, folks. Now this thing's getting a little full and starting to pull. Helps if we drop down into appropriate gears, though. I think that's our problem, and now we're rocking and rolling. We are going to put on the max speed to try and get over to this other combine so we can unload while its auger's on the correct side. I'm happy to see, though, that he chose to start moving down these short rows, uh, and that way we're not going to collide with this other combine. Once we're done with the short rows, we can put him on the long rows, and he'll work his way back. But... Uh, yeah, everything's working great here. Uh, I don't use the in-game helpers very much these days, so I'm happy to see that they're functioning for us here. Oh, I'm too close again. That's the one thing I'm going to have to get a little bit more used to, is not hugging right up next to the header with this setup. Now, I'm going to try this once I stop, and it should just give me a message that says that it can't find any harvesters on the field if it's not going to work, which I think that's going to be the case. So that seems to be going... Let's push this unloader too, away, too far away from the field. Okay, this might be the field position here. And then, boom. Okay, it does actually start up. We'll see if this does anything. Meanwhile, we got to come back over here and finish recording our auto drive course for the truck. So off we go. Like I said, I want to get to the end here. And hopefully there's going to be enough room for me to do a bit of a u-turn and start heading back up i'm not looking forward to at some point having to clean up all of these u-turn areas that we're making but the map is so big here that i don't necessarily want to have to go around the block so to speak i'm gonna end up on the field just a little bit doing that that's all right and i think we will uh, come back and create a little offset for the field entrance uh over here I think I'm going to run this straight lined all the way back up. Uh, we've we've got enough of a mess on the auto drive courses. I think this is going to be the best way to handle that. Speaking of the mess, I believe this is uh, the mess. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to drive this straight through, I think. I do want this to have a loop on it at some point. I'm just trying to figure out what we're what we're doing here. I'm probably going to buy this cornfield at some point. Um, I'll probably try to avoid these ones with the telephone poles in it because it's going to just be a nightmare. So I don't know what I'm doing now, though. I'm getting, getting kind of lost in our auto drive createdness, so I'm going to just cut my losses. We're going to loop around here and have this be 
the current uh, length of this road. Now, really, I should probably have just a two-way track on this narrow road here. Because I don't think I'd even get by with two semis here right now. Um, we're going to just ignore that for the time being, though. But like I said, this auto drive course over here is just kind of a mess. And uh, the more we monkey around with it, I think the uh, worse it's going to be until we have a plan. So let's... Uh, Let's stop monkeying around until we have a plan. We'll just connect to this to there. And we're going to go back down here to the other end of the field and get a uh, little offset like this field 53 one where we get off into the grass on the edge of the field. And we should be good to go. Um, this is going to connect to that. And then this needs to be able to come in back up to the farm. All right. I think that we've at least got a functioning loop. That's a very crooked auto drive course. I haven't seen the uh, grain cart move at all. I'm suspecting it's not actually gonna work out for us, but we'll wait until I see one of these 80% full messages before I judge it too harshly. Although I do wanna like jump in and like unload this guy on his way back up the field since he's pointed the right way because I know he's gonna be full by the time he's coming back down the other way. But that's all right. Um, I think for this field though, I'm going to create the pullout uh, a little bit more down on this end because we do have all the short rows down here. So I think it makes more sense to be down here. And I'm gonna put it right down here like so and this is field 54 technically soon it's all gonna be one field so it won't matter that much and then i'm just gonna have it come right back out onto this now i should have made this a secondary path that things only go on when they need to get to field 54 but i did not which is not that big of a deal uh, I'm going to set this up for field 54, and we are going to be doing soybeans. And then I'm going to just turn around here real quick, see if we can get pointed back going the right way, and let's see how it does. It should be able to handle this no problem. And yep, the AI worker just got a full grain tank up here, so the course play driver definitely only unloads other course play drivers which is exactly what i expected all right this guy looks like he's doing his thing we don't need to sit here and watch him park we can hop over here and get running the grain cart all right we're gonna have to come at it from the right side so i'm turning around here and i'm realizing this other combine is already approaching the end row here i might as well just run down here and unload this combine before I drive over to the other side of the field. He's almost full, got his uh, flashers on there, letting me know he's past 80%. So in the long run, even though we've got a combine not moving at all, I think this is gonna save us time uh, rather than driving back and forth and this combine being stopped as well. We're gonna try and not be quite as close to the header this time either. See if that helps us out any. I have to say, these combines do unload nice and fast. Doesn't take but uh, a few handful of seconds to get them fully emptied out. Should be close. Watching the bushels go up there. There we go. I think we're done. So let's see if I can get this over to the other side and get both combines moving again. We're booking now. We're only 63% full, but I can definitely feel the weight of this uh, uh, green cart getting uh, pulled around. Even with this giant 715, it uh, feels a little bit uh, hefty as we're getting started. I'm kind of glad that there's not a lot of big hills on this map or we might actually struggle a bit. All right, well, we got over here and emptied the combine. My recording got shut off by accident because uh, I was dealing with a uh, dog that were dog sitting uh, we I had to pause for a second and 
dog is going ballistic and all this other stuff and I bumped the stream deck in the wrong way and the recording went off so I do apologize folks but we're up here and we've got the uh, combines both moving again and we are filling up this semi it's holding quite a bit I'm kind of curious how much this thing holds exactly we had 2,000 bushels almost to the dot in this grain cart uh, when we unloaded the other one uh, which means we'll be able to see how much this holds. Less than 2,000 bushels. I like it. It holds 1,700 bushels. That's pretty good. Uh, definitely bigger than the semi we've got on the other uh, playthrough we're doing on UMRV. So this is going to work out great. And I should probably start unloading these combines again. Keep everything moving. Uh, at this rate, with it holding about 1,700, we might actually be able to have enough grain by the time it gets back to uh, fill it up again. Hopefully it doesn't run into any problems going back up to the farm. I'm going to kind of watch it as it gets to the T up there and make sure he turns to head up to the farm. And while we're watching and waiting, we're going to try and get down here and start unloading this combine. Looks like it's slowing down, so it's probably going to be making the turn. There it goes. It's turning. I think we're good at this point because uh, we know it can get through the bin site up on the farm. We've already done the other fields. And I'm hoping I can unload this guy and then get all the way over there and unload the other worker before he gets to the end row again. Looks like we're about a third of the way full on this combine. I kind of thought it was going to be fuller based on uh, how much it would seem to be filling up between runs last time, but I guess I was doing a little bit more running around, so wasn't paying attention. It probably got an extra round or two in. Still trying to find that happy medium between too close and too far away. There we go. That's looking a little better. All right, I think it's empty. We're going to put the speed on, try and get over to this other combine. The other combine doing the longer rows doesn't have as much uh, buffer for me to get over and unload it. I think I have to unload him every round or he'll get full uh, potentially when he's uh, got the auger on the wrong side. That's my fear. Because then I have to move equipment around and all that good stuff. He doesn't cut in like course play would. That's all right. We don't have a lot of other jobs to do on the farm right now. We do need to get a corn header uh, set up for our combines to do the other field there. I don't think I'm going to grow much corn uh, this year, though, so maybe we'll just uh, lease one for getting those fields done. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to focus more on the, uh, like, wheat, barley, the drilled-type crops. I need to take a look and see what kind of crops are more common in the Missouri area. Like, do they grow oats and barley? Is it just wheat? I don't know. We'll have to take a look. I think they do a lot of soybeans uh, down in Missouri, if I remember right. Well, there wasn't as much in these two combines as I thought there would be. We're at about 800 acres, or 800 acres, 800 bushels, which is about half of a semi. So we will... Uh, We'll definitely be still running the combines and stuff uh, before we need to send another semi back. Although I don't see the semi coming back yet. I wonder what happened to him. Well, we're going to get this guy down to the other end of the field here again. And we'll worry about where the semi is in just a second. Oh, it was just me being nervous. I can see him coming down the uh, road now awesome well we'll see if he makes the turn at the t there that would be the last variable i i would have to say on our new course and that was kind of a janky corner that i created so we'll uh we'll definitely be checking that out now i think this combine's got another full round in him before i need to empty him out um we're gonna just drive over here and see where he's at as long as he's less than 50 percent of a hopper right now he should make it back to this point oh yeah we're gonna be good so i'll just put the a grain cart over here on the headland and we'll wait patiently while these two drivers get a little bit more work done 
I don't really do waiting patiently that well, so what we're going to do is get this big bud out and clean up some of these obnoxious corners that we've missed right here that is in front of us. And then we're going to, I think, uh, go try and till these two fields together. Oh, I love how it's uh, mowing the grass when I drive over it with this thing. I think probably because it has the mulching effect on there. I'm not really sure. Either way, uh, we're going to... Do I have the create field with cultivator thing on this save? I don't think I installed that mod. We might have to grab that. Um, oops. Okay, I can't do that. We can't leave a little foot of grass here. There we go. That looks so much better. Uh, I do need to deal with the other corner there. It has a lot of areas. The, that side doesn't look quite so bad. There might be a, one or two little patches. And we can get that when we go down to the other end when we're creating the field here. But uh, we're going to get this corner right in front of us while we're here getting into position. I'm going to have to save the game and go install the mod to let me till up the boundary here with my Dagelman. No sense getting another piece of tillage equipment for just an odd job like that. There we are. All tilled up. Looking good. And there we are. That looks good. For this, I'm going to just square this tool off right now while I'm thinking about it. These two fields don't exactly line up either, so that's going to be a little bit of an oddity, but that's okay. We'll be tilling this strip up between the two of them, and then we'll be okay with course play running the length of this whole field area. Looks like my combine is at the right position for emptying, and the other one just started its drive back up, so I'm going to grab both of these real quick. And I can't really combine the fields until these other little chunk of soybeans up here is ready to be harvested anyway, which doesn't look like will happen until November now, which is crazy to me. I don't remember ever harvesting beans that late, but I guess we probably have a crop calendar more appropriate to the southern climate, maybe? I don't know. I'll have to uh, do a little bit of research and see at what times of year they're typically planting and harvesting some of these crops in Missouri. Either way, we're all emptied out there. I better put the speed on to try and catch up with that combine before he gets to the end row. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle, but luckily this 715 quad track can put the speed on once we adjust the gears. And oh, there is the rain. Um, we're going to have to quickly stop our combines because combining in the rain results in a penalty to your yields in a farm sim for some reason. I don't know if that's to represent wet crops or what, but we used to uh, finish out harvesting if it was just a little bit of a rain. Uh, I know that we would keep going occasionally. Stuff would get pretty gummed up though. Uh, pretty quickly with the dust and the, the rain. Everything would be coated in dirt and dust and then the rain would just make it uh, very painful to do anything and just be this thick slime on everything. So you couldn't go long, but you could go for a little bit sometimes. Let's pop out the auger here. And I don't know why I slowed time way down. In fact, I might as well speed time up. We can't do a whole lot until the rain stops. So we'll put that up to 15x while I'm working on this. And man, our wage payments for using actual base game workers are through the roof. No family and friends discount here. All right, well, I might as well shut that combine down for now. And we're not quite to a full semi yet, but... There's not a lot else going on in the rain, so off we go to unload. I suppose I can actually come around here on the roadside and unload as well. We used to do that all the time on the farm. Oh my goodness. That was totally my bad. We've got these huge stacks on the semi. Customize.
There we go. We're gonna cut those down. 50 bucks. Come out here with a sawzall. Let me back ourselves up here a little bit. See if I can whoop, whoop, get myself back onto the Field 54 Auto Drive course. Our trailer's going to be a little bit out in the way, though. I don't think it's quite going to get himself squared up here. That's okay. Should be good enough for me to get this oh, unloaded. We still managed to bump that stack. I think it'll be less of a problem next time. I just need to remember to line that crook of the auger up there with the stack a little bit better. And we should fill up the front hopper all the way and have enough to put some in the back. We got 400 left. Doing pretty good here. Uh, I think I will just send the semi up to the bin site here as well as soon as we get this emptied out. No reason to let it sit out here in the rain. Give him something to do at least. And with that all out of the way, I'm going to run this guy back over to the other combines and we're going to wait out this rainstorm. Uh, I think we're probably going to ramp up the episode here. I, I'm not actually sure how long this episode is going to be, folks. Normally, I kind of plan to work out a job and have a good amount of content. We did a lot of miscellaneous other getting everything sorted out here for this field. Uh, this is going to be real easy to finish up, though, as soon as the rain stops. So we'll check in next time uh, as our rain ramps up. And we will likely be diving into getting our corn harvested. Maybe I'm going to buy that corn field across the way there, too, and we'll get both of those uh, uh, fields going. I like the idea of more land. Can't go wrong with more fields in a save like this, especially because we've got so much big equipment. And uh, hopefully I've got enough left on my loan capacity that we're going to be able to uh, make that happen. However, if you liked the episode, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Well, that's all for today. Ketterk out.